Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and Merry Christmas to everyone. Brett and I are all here in the shop trying to put the finishing touches on Project Bastard here so we can get it all loaded up in the trailer and take it up north tomorrow and do some testing on it. We've taken a few laps around the yard on it. So far, um, it took a few days, but my smile finally came from the back of my head and moved back into the correct position where it's supposed to be because this thing's a blast. My God, what a hoot this thing is. And what three cylinder is it really? I mean, there's so much fun. I mean, God, they feel so torquey right out of the hole and they just scream and which this thing does. I mean, it does all that stuff. And God, it's such a fun sled to ride. I can't wait to get it up north and get it on some trails and get it on some long straightaways and really let that thing sing. It's gonna be a blast, but I'm gonna do a walk around on it now. Our last video was just Saturday, just a couple days ago. And I was talking about that we thought we could get it out on the snow by the end of that day or first thing on Sunday morning. Well, we got it out on the snow on Saturday. After the video, things just started going good. I mean, we just all of a sudden, boom, the sled was done and out the door it went and around the yard. And then next thing you know, it's around the neighborhood and down through the fields. And, and it was just a blast. Trent and I took some turns on it and we both agreed it's fun. And it goes right from idle Mash the flipper right to 9100, and that's just right where it likes to sit. It just and it just sounds sweet. So let's walk around it. Um, and, and I got to tell you, the whole the whole reason of this build, and it's crazy where an idea of a build can come up from. But as simple on this one was, I seen a hood posted on Craigslist for an Indy. It said Indy 650 hood. It's about all the description said, and I'm looking at it. And I see this thing on the front, right where it says Force Lake Motorsports. I text the guy right away, I, I, I want the hood. How much and where are you located? And he was located in Owatonna, but he was going up to Duluth for the weekend to look at Christmas lights. So he agreed to haul it to Duluth with him and then drop it back off in another neighboring city where I live close to and we met at a restaurant there. And his name's Craig. And the guy, he started the whole, he started the whole vision of this build out of selling me this hood. Because I remember this hood back in the early 90s going into Forest Lake Motorsports. And this hood sat on an 8650. The whole chassis was red anodized. And it was just beautiful. And I said to myself, you know, one day I'm going to build myself a, a show sled, you know. And, and, and here it is with the hood that inspired the whole thing from that sled that I've seen at Forest Lake Motorsports. And I'm glad that I have a piece of history on this sled. I'm glad I was able to preserve it. Uh, I think it's just, just cooler and crap, you know, to be able to do something like this. And then this winter, and it's ironic how this whole thing goes around again, I, I get the skis from Craig. I posted on another website, and I was looking for some aluminum skis for this project. He gets a hold of me. He lets me know he's the guy that sold me the hood treating me very fair on the skis and whammo, there's the skis. I mean, it, it's just crazy how this came together. And, and Craig, I mean, he, 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 he's, he, he got the whole thing going by selling me the hood and then the skis is like the top of it right here. I mean, these skis are so cool looking and, and uh, Craig has a lot to do with this build. And I, I couldn't thank him enough. And uh, you know, I, I, it's just awesome. And then I've had other people contact me from Facebook knowing Craig and said, you know, they remember the hood too, and they remember it being on that red chassis and stuff too. So it's it's just awesome. I'm, and all the videos we've done so far, the response has just been incredible on this build. And, and a lot of guys can relate to these sleds. You know, when they came out in the early 90s, it was 88 was the first year of the 650. But, you know, a lot of guys like my age, you know, in the 40s, remember these sleds. And we all remember they were just so cool and just, just incredibly bad, you know. They're, they had the single exhaust system on, they sounded so awesome. You could hear them a mile away. You knew that was a 650 coming down through the woods. I mean, you just knew it. And you couldn't wait for it to come by so you could look at it because I couldn't own one in the day. I had an Indy uh, four, or 400 is what I had. My first Indy was a 400. Then I bought a XLT, had a couple of those. But, you know, I always dreamt of having a 650 and now I have five of them, you know. And it's, it's great. I mean, glad I could share this build with everybody. And, we're going to fire it up here in a few minutes and, and uh, rev it up a couple times. And it's already been ran. I mean, there's heat in the engine here. So when I fire it up, it's not a cold start. I mean, there's no risk of these season or anything like that. I mean, I've already ran it a few times today. And, and there's plenty of heat in the engine. So, But I'm going to walk around it. Um, 
I got a really special dash plate on here that I haven't been shown yet, and, and now it's going to be shown. And I got that from Shane Jackson. He's uh, located in New York, and uh, he's on Facebook. You can find him just about in any player's group on Facebook. You can find him on player's uh, wedge and triples. You can find him on the storm uh, groups. You can find him on uh, Indie Garage is the easiest one to find him on. But just look on uh, the player's Indie Garage, and um, he's on there. He's uh, He makes these dash plates. And I, I seen it on there, and I'm, I'm a new guy on Facebook. I have never done Facebook up until a couple months ago, and I'm trying to maneuver my way around there right away. You know, I joined these groups because that's what I wanted to be part of was these players' wedge groups and stuff because I wanted to share my builds and I want to see other people's ideas. And, and uh, I, I, he was po he posted, I got a few plates left over, and I'm going to be uh, ordering more of these dash plates. And I contacted him right away. It took me a while to try and figure out how to send this private message on there. And, and then he private messaged me back, and then I couldn't figure out how to open them up. And then we had... Uh, and then I think we did some text messaging then because that's the only way I could communicate with them. And, and then we did a phone call too. And, but, um, and, and I have the, the whole private message thing finally figured out. But anyways, I asked them, the first question I asked, hey, can you make these dash plates with a, um, you know, instead of it saying Andy, can I just pick a name? And he says, yeah, I can do these plates with anything you want on there. I can special put whatever name you want on there, custom make it, whatever you want. So I tell him about this build, I'm building this, Project Bastard. I said, can you put Bastard down there? And, uh, and I just let him run from there with it. I just, and he's like, yep, I can do it. Not a problem. I'm like, I want red. And um, and I think his, uh, his, the machine was having some issues, so it was taking a while, but I wasn't panicking because I was taking a while on this thing anyway. So, but he, And he had contacted me a couple times. Hey, I'm sorry it's taking a long time. It doesn't normally take this long, but it, it's coming. And I told him, no worries. You know, um, it, the sledding on the snow yet anyway. But when it came, I mean, I was, I, and, he, and he actually sent, he spoiled a little bit, he sent me a picture of it. And so I seen it actually before I took it out of the package, but he had to send, he said, I had to send you a picture. It's like the coolest looking one I've done so far. And like I said, I let him run with it. He, he put bastard on there with some flags on it. It looks cool. And heck, you know, I'll, I'll show you here in a minute. But so that, that was pretty cool that I was able to get a nameplate put on the sled, um, the sled's name now. And it was kind of a bastard through the whole process of building this thing. It's, it, it, you know, I, I've built a lot of TXs and I've built some PDCs and, and, but God, this thing, I don't know. I mean, I get some horrible walls on trying to find the right part or I get one and not realizing, ah, I forgot to get this. I, I just did a lot of running around on this one and, and just trying to get, I, that's why I switched from doing the mid 70s stuff because it was so hard to get parts of my day. I'm going to concentrate on these indies now. They're a lot easier. And yeah, not the case on this one. I don't know why it was, but maybe this this sled just made me uh, earn it. I had to earn every bit of it too. And Trent was a huge help on it. I mean, without his help, this thing wouldn't even be at this point right now. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, it takes me longer to build stuff now just because I think sometimes I just I get kind of hung up on being too particular about something, which isn't the end of the world either, but uh, Trenton is a huge help, and he, he tackled this skid last Saturday, and, and that took him a good part of the day to completely go through that whole skid, and, and that would have taken me a day to do it too, and so, I mean, we were just, I'm ahead of the schedule when he's helping me, and it, it's awesome that, that he's willing to be out here and help me on this kind of stuff, and it's fun building this stuff together, and we both can take pride in it and stuff, so, but I grab the camera here, I walk through it, Put this thing on the stand, spin the track a little bit, uh, make a little noise, and then uh, it's going to end up in the trailer. And the next video of this thing is going to be on the snow. We're going to be having some fun with it then. So let's take a walk around, guys. And yeah, just, you know, when I was talking about when I was making this seat on how I took them two inches out of the front of it to kind of get you pushed into the handlebars a little bit and brought these bars up a little bit, I love. I just love this feel. You're kind of pushed in a little bit. You're just kind of right in the saddle. And this is how I've built a, quite a few of my sleds now. And the PDCs, and I was building them, I was chopping them seats up and pushing everything way forward and moving the bars forward, kind of giving you that rider forward position and just kind of pushing you right in there. This just feels awesome. When we were riding it around on Saturday, I mean, Trent and I both commented right away, the riding position and feel of it, 
is spot on. I mean, it, it just feels so comfortable sitting like this. Like, sit, these wedges, this is where your ass belongs. Right down in here in the seat. I mean, hey, God bless the people who want to put guard, uh, handlebar risers and stuff on and stand up and ride these things. But, you know, back in the day when these sleds came out, nobody even envisioned on standing up on a snowmobile and riding. You were just going to fall off anyway. So we sat down and rode them. And I wish back then I would have had my Indy set up like this. I mean, th this would have been such a comfortable sled to ride back in the day if I would have thought of doing all this stuff back then. But I didn't. So, I mean, but now I think of it and I love the way this thing's set up. And so let's show you this dash plate now, guys. And, and like I so said, this is, this is all thanks to Shane Jackson out of New York. You can find him on Facebook right here. Look at, I mean, how cool is that? Just look at how, I mean, and when you're sitting on the sled, you just see all that anodized red. And like I said, back in the day when this hood was originally around on a sled, that was the, the anodizing that was on the tunnel was that red. So if you could just imagine what this sled looked like with that anodized red tunnel on it, I mean, it was just, my God, it was just killer. I mean, it really grabbed your eye as soon as you walked in there. And we'll just do a final walk around the sled we got the snow flap on now, um, the skid in it. Like I said, we rode it. We rode it last Saturday without the snow flap because I didn't have this little piece of aluminum bent up quite yet. Let me see if I can get up down in here so you can see it. See this piece right here? I did this. So it goes down and down this way, two and a quarter of an inch, and back up here. So what I did was rivet it on up here where the snow flap normally would have. Then I moved my snow flap down and riveted onto here to give the flap kind of a kicked out a little bit. These SKSs were kind of notorious when the flap hung straight down was getting the flap stuck in the track all the time. Just about anybody I know with an SKS and even myself that's had an SKS got that dang flap stuck in the track. And so I did that hoping to hold the flap back a little ways so it won't get stuck down that track. I don't want to ruin that flap getting hard to find a black flap with red lettering on it like I did there. So like I said, with moving that seat forward, kind of made this area back here look a little bit longer. Uh, gives the sled a little bit longer effect then. And, you know, it's just subtle details. I mean, I didn't do a lot of customized work on this thing. Uh, more made things look really nice and clean. And, you know, it's all because of this right here. And the pinstriping. I mean, everybody in the 90s, early 90s, you had to have your sled pinstriped. Um, everybody did it. It was there was a lot of pinstripers around then, and uh, that's kind of a dying art now. Um, you just don't see a lot of hand brushed pinstriping anymore. But all sleds back then, everybody had pinstriping done on their sleds. It was just cool as hell. So let's pop up the hood, Trenton, kind of show the finished everything finished underneath the hood, and then uh, we'll get this thing up on the stand and make these pipes sing. And I've ridden it, um, and I wiped it back off at riding it. You get specks and spits of, I mean, it's, this is going to be a tough one to keep clean. I can already tell. I'll do my dangest. I'll, I'll try hard to keep it clean, but it is not going to be easy. But I wanted it nice and clean and fresh when I started, you know. And if it's going to get dirty, it's going to get dirty. And the reason it's dirty is because I'm riding this thing. The only way it's going to stay super clean like that all the time is not riding it, and that's not what I built this thing for. I built it to look nice, I built it to sound good, and I built it to ride. And I'm doing all three of them. That's just all there is to it. So let's slide the hood back down, Trenton, and uh, we're going to fire this thing up. And uh, this thing is it's just a beast. It just it sounds so good. I'd help Trenton with the track stand. I'll get it over to him, but my back is uh, my back isn't happy today, so I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him do the muscle work.
Um, they really, really sound good. It's a little loud even. I mean, it's, it's, it scratches my ears just a snitch. Um, with a helmet on, I'm hoping it dials it back a snitch, but I might even have to wear an earplug in my right ear at least when I'm riding this thing because it, it's, it's right there on being a little loud. So, But I like my sleds loud. Not too loud, but I like them loud. So um, I really appreciate the following that I've gotten on this build. I got to say, guys, it's just I, I'm, I'm just... I'm overwhelmed. I couldn't believe I posted that video on Sunday and I'm at like 10,000 views. It might even be a little bit over now, but I was, uh, I, I'm, I'm just so thankful that so many people have followed this build and commented it. I just loved all the comments and great comments and super nice comments and supportive. And, and I reply back to everybody's comments too. And, and, uh, I really appreciate that guys. And, and, uh, Everybody really, really seems to like this sled, and and I really appreciate everybody watching the videos, and and I hope you enjoyed this video too. I'm sorry it got a little long-winded on this one, but I wanted to really try and cover everything, and uh, we'll get it out on the snow. We'll do another video of it on the snow, and I'll maybe if all the clutching works and everything in it the way it was working, but if everything still works the way it was. I'll even I'll explain what I have in it for clutching and gearing and stuff then. But I don't want to really say too much about that until I've actually tested it and determined that the gearing and the clutching and all that stuff is what it needs to be. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.